Well, hello, Bellator Nation. 2021 has been a challenge for all of us, and it was no different at Bellator MMA as we dealt with COVID-19 and closed-door fights for much of the year where there's no fans inside. But no matter what, somehow we all managed to see 18 amazing events that provided us with classics like Rumble Johnson versus Jose Augusto and Pettis versus Archuleta in a championship matchup. We've seen fights end in submissions. We've seen them end in knockouts. Some tough judges' decisions. There's been so many incredible battles to choose from to pick my favorite 10. That's not an easy thing to do, but tough job. Someone's got to do it, so let's get it on. Number 10, Juan Archuleta against Sergio Pettis. This was a championship matchup between two guys that have contrasting styles. They go about things differently, and it was the champion against the number one. I love this fight based upon the technical aspect of the fight. I loved what Sergio Pettis was able to do with his stand-up, with his range, with his footwork. Juan Archuleta always pressing, not being able to get the wrestling in that he normally can bring into the fight, bringing his opponent to the ground. That didn't happen much for him, but it was an amazing battle of technical aspects in the stand-up that I just enjoyed the fight. I thought it was a fantastic five-round affair. Went to a judge's decision, and Sergio Pettis took the title from Juan Archuleta in what was my number 10 fight of the year. Number nine, I have a man they call the king, Carl Albrechtson, against Dovlish Don Yagshimuradov. Man, these guys went at it. This is a light heavyweight battle, and you're talking about two guys that just refused to lose in this. They both had their moments where they were in control of the fight. They both had their moments where they hurt the other fighter. Oh, Connor big. Can Yachimorov recover? He is stunned. Can he fight his way out of it? Shots, the spinning heel kick, and now he clipped him with the right. Albertson in some serious trouble here. And they both just came battling back to the very end. When we talk about blood and guts fights, when we talk about that warrior spirit, that I will not quit, I will not let this end. I love how they battled in this fight. I thought it was a fantastic contest. Both giving everything they had at the end. Either one could stand up, and that's what I'm always looking for. Guys that leave it all in the cage, and in this fight, they definitely did. Number eight on my list. You're going to see this guy on my list twice because he has turned into an amazing fighter who is putting on incredible, just incredible fights. Aaron Pico against Justin Gonzalez. I love this fight because they both just went after each other. Justin Gonzalez showing why he was undefeated at 12-0 up to this point. Aaron Pico has turned the corner on his career. He is in control of himself during the fights. He is fighting smart. There was times that he did things that you looked and went, probably not the smartest thing to do at the time, but he's trying things, he's trying to bring new elements into his game. Justin Gonzalez, just as tough as you can ever find in somebody the body shots that he absorbed and kept coming back from. Just an incredible fight between two young fighters that no doubt in my mind, somewhere along their path, they're going to end up meeting up once again. My number seven, Kieran Clark against Jordan Barton. This happened in Dublin, Ireland, and I love this fight because Jordan Barton came out with this attitude of, I don't care what the crowd is behind. I don't care who you are. I don't care that you're undefeated. I'm going to put that O into the trash can for you. And he came out to beat the guy who was the favorite. He came out to beat the guy that was this hard-nosed grappler. And man, he did everything he could. But Kieran Clark showed how tough he is. He kept sticking to his game. He had an improved stand-up game. And when it came to the finish, he got the finish the way we expected if he was going to win. That's it. That was as tenacious a performance from a young fighter as you are going to see. An unbelievable performance. He had to go almost all the way to the end of the third round to get it. It was that war of attrition. 
dragging that guy into deep waters, but Clark was fantastic in this. He absorbed some huge shots, big knees that just snapped his head back. Couldn't believe the amount of damage that he was able to absorb and keep coming forward. Great fight by both guys. Neither guy needed to lose in this one because they were both winners and the fans were definitely the big winners. All right, number six on my list, and I, I mentioned this one before, Rumble Johnson against the replacement, the guy that came in last minute, Jose Augusto. This was a great fight, and Jose Augusto had Rumble Johnson in a place that he was not that used to being into. No one really hurts Rumble. Got another uppercut by Johnson. Johnson. And Augusto. To finish up Rumble. Anthony Rumble Johnson showed you what kind of heart he has. Fought his way through it and then came back with the huge knockout victory. This was to move on in the light heavyweight Grand Prix. Rumble ended up getting into a position where he had a physical problem, had to pull himself out. But what a big win in his Bellator debut. Fantastic performance by Anthony Rumble Johnson. All right, my number five. It was a preliminary fight. Most people don't know about it, but Henry O.K. Corrales, a guy that I love to watch, moved down from featherweight into the bantamweight division to take on the great name, Johnny Cupcake Campbell. Johnny was brought into Bellator. This was his chance to actually shine, to show who he was, and he was not going to let this opportunity pass. This was a war. Johnny Cupcake Campbell's walked through a barrage of shots. He ate big shots just to walk through and deliver his own. He ended up hurting Henry early in the fight. Actually made it to where he couldn't see out of one of his eyes. And he just kept up that pressure. It was a phenomenal performance. And he ends it by putting Henry down and getting the rear naked choke in the second round. Love this fight by both guys. And Johnny Campbell showed why he deserved to be on the Bellator roster. That man had nothing for me. Nothing. Number four on my list, probably one of the biggest fights of the year for Bellator. AJ McKee versus Patricio Pitbull for the Featherweight Grand Prix tournament title and the Featherweight Championship. This was the matchup that was just made to happen. Both guys came up in the tournament. They finally meet in the final, and A.J. McKee just puts on the performance that was just extraordinary. Came out, controlled the distance, landed the big head kick, had Patricio in trouble, jumped to the guillotine, had him to the point where he's going out. Fight gets stopped. An incredible performance by A.J. McKee in one of the biggest fights of the year with the most pressure can't wait to see these guys match up again. Hope it happens. Number three, Bantamweight division. Probably the best division in all of MMA right now and two of the best guys doing it. Rafion Stotts versus Magomed Magomedov. Magomed Magomedov, I, I, I worked with him in Russia. One of the only guys to have a win over Peter Yan. Rafion Stotts, only one loss in his career. Amazing battle between these two guys. The wrestling that was taking place was just unbelievable. The transitions, the exchanges, these guys just went after it the entire three rounds. Yes, it went to a judge's decision, but if you like to watch technique, guys that can just put it out there and go after their opponents, this was the fight to watch. Rafion Stotts got a unanimous decision victory. Only the second loss in Magomed Magomedov's career. One to Peter Yan, and now one to Rafion Stotts. I can't wait to see these guys match up again. Number two on my list. He came back. Aaron Pico once again fighting Aiden Lee. Aiden Lee is a kind of a freak of a size guy. Six foot tall and 145 pounds. Fast, lean, does everything well. And in this fight, was fighting for his life because Aaron Pico was on a mission. He was going after submission after submission, and Aiden Lee was fighting him off. Aaron Pico had to go to an anaconda choke six times in this fight, going after Aiden Lee. 
handily fought his way through all of it. It was an incredible battle, not only of what was taking place technique-wise, but the cardio, the output that both guys had was just insane. The fact that they could go that fast for that long, amazing fight. Aaron Pico gets the submission victory with that anaconda choke. Looking for the anaconda choke. He might get it now just based upon Aiden Lee being tired. And Aiden Lee forced to tap Aaron Pico with a masterpiece here tonight. Unbelievable fight. One of my favorites of the year. Hope I get to see something as good in 2022. Come down to number one, and it really, I couldn't pick any other fight. Paul Daly, a guy that we know has got just bombs in his hands against Sabah Homasi, uh, just another guy who goes after the win. He doesn't want it to go to a judge's decision. He wants to knock you out or go out on his shield. And man, it was close both ways. He had Paul Daly in trouble in the first round. He hurt Paul. But he fell for two. Oh, and Omasi tags Daly with the right hand. And Omasi all over Rodan Tex Daly. Omasi detonating these bombs on Daly. Omasi looking for his seventh first round knockout. And it was Daly weathering the storm for now, but not for long. It was really only the second time that I had seen Paul hurt that bad in a fight. The first time was against Nick Diaz back in Strike Force, and this time he was seriously hurt. He was in trouble. He was defending for his life. Sabah Masi was going after him, went after him so hard he got kind of tired. So by the end of the first round, when he couldn't put him away, he was gassed, and Paul Daly came out and had energy and went after him and finished. Sabah Homasi. And total strikes oh, landed, John. And take a look at that. 27. Oh, Homasi gets Homasi in trouble. Daly dropping the left. And Paul Daly defeats Sabah Homasi here in round number two. What a comeback for Paul Daly. But you looked at the fight and you go, thank you, both of you. That was just amazing. I cannot ask for anything more in a fight. It is absolutely the fight of the year in my mind for Bellator in 2021. Those are my top 10 fights of 2021. Credit to all the fighters, to the organization and for an incredible year. Trust me, this could have easily been a top 20 list. I could have gone more. Had to break it down to these 10. There were still some other incredible fights that got left out. It is just what happens. This just ramps up the excitement for the future of Bellator and I cannot wait to see what's in store. In the meantime, to everyone out there, happy holidays to all of you, and I will see you in 2022.